Paris. A city of beauty that doesn't feel like a city, but feels like its own world. And visiting Paris in the autumn time, it feels like its own planet. I was so lucky to be here during fall to see the leaves change color and be able to share this video with you. So join me for some fun activities and exploring around the city. Walking around a city as beautiful and historical as Paris, it may come as no surprise that there are over 200 miles of labyrinthian tunnels right beneath your feet. And believe it or not, you are actually able to go explore a part of these underground tunnels, and this section is called the catacombs. So, of course, I decided to go visit. The catacombs house the remains of over 6 million Parisians from the 18th century. And if you aren't interested in seeing the art of bodily remains, I would skip this part. To begin your journey, you must ascend down 65 feet or 6 stories into an underground world. The first thing you might notice when you walk in is that the bones are organized. Miners created displays out of respect for the departed. But instead of just piling up bones, they had lined the walls with skulls and created decorative patterns and displays such as crosses, circles, and hearts using other bones. The catacombs have been used for everything from movies to parties to even growing mushrooms. In World War II, they were hiding places for the French resistance, planning their attacks on the Germans. They could also use them as an escape route when the Germans invaded the city. And once the Nazis took Paris, they used these tunnels as bunkers. One of the most well-known structures in the catacombs is called the barrel. This large structure you see right here supports the roof of the tunnel and is made of skulls and tibia. One of my favorite things about the city is although there are a lot of buildings, there is also an abundance of nature and parks, such as the Luxembourg Gardens, which is a 60-acre park that is filled with ponds, sculptures, fountains, flower beds, tennis courts, pony rides, playgrounds, food kiosks, and open-air cafes. I love these gardens so much because it's such a great place to relax, read, have lunch, have coffee, or meet up with friends. grounds in the Luxembourg Garden, you will also find the Luxembourg Palace. Presently, the palace is the seat of the Senate of the Fifth Republic, and one of the coolest things, in my opinion, that the palace holds is the French Senate's library. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a tour to go, but I have seen photos and, man, it is still on my bucket list. <laughs> It was time to go to the Louvre. I did not realize how big the Louvre was. I've been to the grounds many times before, but I was unaware that it consisted within all the buildings surrounding me.
The Louvre is the largest museum in the world and it permanently displays more than 35,000 works of art in a collection that totals approximately 380,000 artifacts. It was once a fortress, a home, and it was built by King Philip Augustus in the 12th century. Such a short time being alive All this hardship and convenience Makes it so hard to make sense I will listen now, I will listen now And I know it's just a matter of time Before we tumble across the borderline We can't go forward and we can't rewind I will listen now Paris would never be complete if you didn't go to the Eiffel Tower at least once. One of my favorite ways to view the Eiffel Tower is from far away where you can sit in the grass and read or have lunch or just, you know, take a nap if you want to. I also adore seeing the Eiffel Tower at sunset when it twinkles, but I was so exhausted by the end of my days that I was just back in the hotel room and I actually didn't see it twinkle at all on this trip, unfortunately, but I have seen it before and it is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen.
have heard of the American Library in Paris. This was a library founded in 1920 as a home for 1.5 million books sent to soldiers in World War I trenches by the American War Service. There is a very popular book that is out right now called The Paris Library by Janet Charles. I can't pronounce her middle name. And it is based on the true World War II story of the heroic librarians that worked at the American Library in Paris. So if you've ever considered visiting this beautiful city, just remember, Paris is always a good idea.